once we're done adopting, your developers are writing code and they're happy, they're uh, developing. Now it's time to uh, place your executable in production. Uh, uh, I heard this uh, nice uh, story about the code uh, leaving this uh, nice, warm, protecting environment of development and throwing it out to the harsh cold production and see how it behaves. So that's roughly what is going on here. And, and Go makes it easy uh, or better in, in several ways. One of the things is Go is compiled to machine code in a single static executable. Machine code means it's, it's fast, right? The Go compiler is, well, not as efficient as let's say uh, um, the LVM uh, toolchain or maybe uh, GCC, but it's pretty fast. And every time uh, they're adding more optimizations and, and more things to it, but it is going to be fast. The second thing is that there's no runtime on the destination machine, right? When I'm working on, on Python, I need to have Python on the target machine or the target Docker, and maybe some external uh, libraries that I'm using, all of them there. In Go, just an executable. Take it, copy it, your Docker containers are going to be much, much smaller. Right? Some people in the Go world actually working with Scratch Docker, should just wrapping up the, uh, the executable and that's usually need a little bit more like uh, SSH certificates and some other things, but that's about. It. So uh, th this is nice and you're going to see very uh, small Docker images if you walk with them. Static executable also means no shared libraries. It means that if you're compiling your code on Alpine, which does not have libc, and then your production decides that they're uh, using uh, Debian, it is going to work there. It's not going to use any shared libraries, including libc, including other ones uh, in your system. So this uh, static uh, executable, it's a great thing. Uh, deployment is just a copy of the file, you're done. That's it. Uh, it's also very easy to cross compile. Um, meaning, uh, most of the time, you're, uh, let's say, uh, working on, uh, on Darwin, but your CI is running on Linux with uh, AMD, uh, with the uh, Intel architecture, and now your company wants to try, let's say, Linux with ARM. You don't need to change anything but the single environment variable, and you have uh, your code compiled with the same toolkit. You don't need any extra tool, uh, extra SDK to, to ARM, and you can run it on an ARM machine. And this is why a lot of companies, uh, when they give out agents, collection agents for logging, for metrics, and maybe other things, they really like Go. It's pretty easy to create one single executable per platform, a combination of OS and uh, operating system and, and architecture, and run it. There's a nice uh, tool called Go Releaser, which will just write a configuration file saying I want these architectures supported, et cetera. It can <clears throat> even upload to GitHub releases or uh, anything or other places. It can compress them. It can do a lot of really nice stuff uh, for you out of Linux. And uh, in latest version of Go, we also uh, have the ability to embed assets. Meaning uh, maybe I have a web server, but you know I have some uh, JavaScript code or maybe some uh, CSS files. These now can go in the executable. And there's a way to, uh, for, the, for the Go executable, create a virtual file system and, and basically read these things from. Um, um, okay, uh, there is a question uh, about debuggability. How to get debug symbols? Um, so the way the code is built, is built, it's built with debug symbol in it already. So the executable usually will have the debug for everything else. Uh, when we talk about third-party packages, Go has only the notion of source packages. There's no binary packages that you pull in. So every time you build your code, you're building from source, including the third-party packages, you have the full debug information. When your code is running in production, you need to get some eyes on it. And when we uh, look at 
how uh, things are going in production, we have two things that we look. One of the metrics that are um, telling us how the code is behaving. And then we have the logs that usually uh, when we use them when something goes wrong to see what's coming up. So Go has a built-in package for both, right? There's exp var for metrics and there's log for logging. Um, but if you want to use other packages, such as Prometheus and others, uh, this is something you can do. You can also use uh, something known as a middleware to add metrics automatically to uh, your HTTP handlers and other things. This is uh, including request IDs. Um, you can pass in a single request ID uh, throughout the chain. There's a established way called context to do that. There are many thoughts about um, discoverability and, and uh, and visibility of code running in production. Apart, apart from uh, the built-in logger, which is uh, very bare bones, uh, there, there are external loggers. I'm mentioning two here. One is Zap by Uber, which is very popular. So Uber, if you don't know, writes a lot of Go, and they also have a lot of uh, open source uh, Go code. Um, pretty good one. And there is a, an experimental S-log uh, package, which is structured logging, uh, which is developed by the Go team, but currently it's an experimental state, but it is slated to go into the start library at one point or another. Apart from um, metrics and logging, we also have uh, an ability to run the profiler on a running service. And running the profiler, you can ask it questions about the runtime, how many Go teams, what they're doing, uh, you can run a CPU profile or a memory profile. You can run an execution tracer, which gives you a really detailed um, anything with, uh, and all of that is just a single line of input. And you can have that. Of course, on the other side, right, this is a security risk. So uh, you probably want to uh, guard this endpoint, <laughs> not let anyone from the outside do it, but it, it can give you a good visibility to what's going on in this. Area. 